Hi, I'm Scott from Mountain Off-Road, and today I'm going to show you how to install your shackle reversal system on your CJ or your YJ Jeep. Before I do, let's explain to you why you would want to do a shackle reversal system. Now, a stock Jeep with leaf springs, which is your CJ and YJ models, is going to, uh, the shackles are going to be up here into the front, and the pivot point of the spring is going to be back here in the back. So when the wheels and the axle come into contact with an object, the actual motion of the wheel has to spring forward. It's an unnatural motion of the axle and wheel. Uh, now with the shackle reversal system, you're going to spin your you're going to spin your leaf springs around, and your shackle is going to go back here in the back. So when, again, when the when the wheel and axle take a impact with an object. Now the natural motion and pivoting is back here to the back and that allows you a lot more stability on the trails as well as higher speeds going down the highway. Your uh, control is a lot better and handling is a lot more uh, natural and feels a lot better. So let's go ahead and we'll keep on going. Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention is the um, it will move the our design, Mountain Off Road design, does move the uh, axle forward about one inch and what that happens again that natural motion is towards the back now now that you've spun the and moved them back that allows you room for that wheel and that wheel wheel to move to the back so okay now uh, before we get started also I want to show you our different options uh, for you uh, different kits that are available for the shackle reversal system we have the standard it's a standard length um, uh, mount plate. Uh, then we have a stubby here that is a one and seven eighths inches shorter. Gives you a little bit, uh, a little bit more ground clearance. Brings that ear up off the ground a little bit. That is available. Uh, the other options are, um, the other options are a bolt-on kit with this bracket. Uh, you'll, what you'll do is after you get that uh, stock bracket off. You'll be able to slide this up here. We'll get into a little bit more detail a little bit later. But that's a bolt-on application if you're not uh, capable or have welding uh, access to any welding capability. The one that we're going to be doing here is a weld-in style. We'll get the uh, angles set on the shackle. Uh, and again, we'll get into that detail, what, what to set that to. But you'll hole saw a hole through the two walls of the frame then we'll go ahead and weld the bushing in. Uh, so there is a weld-in style as well. Okay, uh, in order to take on this application, uh, the, uh, everything's going to have to be unbolted, so I'm assume that you're going to be able to do that, uh, if you're going to be able to tackle this. It's not that difficult of a project, but go ahead and unbolt all of your uh, bolt points, shackle points. Uh, then you're going to go ahead and take your spring and spin it around like that. Now you're ready to start the assembly of the uh, the next part of this bracket. Now what you're going to need to do first is you've got a stock hanger right here. Go ahead and cut and grind that off, and clean it up real nice. Because if you do the bolt-on application, you're going to need to slide that over close to that area. Or if you do the uh, through the frame weld-in bushing, you're going to be right in that area as well. So make sure that's cleaned up and, and ready to go there. Okay, all right, what we're going to do is this bolt right here, you're going to want to take out. We've loosened the bolt nut off the back side, but this is your steering box bracket. You're going to need to remove that. And then also this right here comes up through your bumper, and because uh, you're going to reuse this one right here. It's the one with the Torx head. Um, definitely hang on to that one. So now here's two uh, they're aluminum bushings that are going to go right in here they are supplied with the kit and then go ahead and get your bracket and want to slide it right up in there that's pretty close you may need to pop it a little bit still Okay, 
Now I'll go ahead and again we're getting going to get back to your Torx head here and we're going to bring that right back up into the hole that you just took it out of right in here. Everything is loose fit until you're ready to sort, uh, start searching or <laughs> torquing everything down. And then the last item here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. It's a lot easier to get this last bolt to go in once this Torx headed bolt is in there. So we can get that in there. Oh, there we go. Okay, now with that, with that in there, it makes this bolt go in a lot easier. There we go. So with everything in the loose configuration, um, and you're ready to tighten everything down, this is 75 foot-pounds, this is 50 foot-pounds, and then the last bolt, the half by inch and a quarter, comes right back here, right in the middle. It's on this center of it, left to right, but then up and down, it's just about right in the middle. So go ahead and, and put that in and tighten this one down to 75 pounds as well. Okay, now that everything's tight, we talked about the foot-pounds that you needed here and everything's tight. Go ahead and get your main eye in here. We'll insert your bolt all the way through. You can go ahead and leave it loose, but make sure it's all the way through both ears of the bracket. Now, what you're going to want to do is take your one-inch spacer block and space it right in between the underneath side of your frame and your spring and your spring here. So go ahead and let it on down and put the full weight of your load of your uh, spring on this bracket right here. Okay. Now that's right there is the proper that's the proper position to put uh, this uh, location of this eye. Okay. Now that everything's uh, in that position. That's. Uh, where you want that now, of course, we've already got the bushing in the frame, but what you'll do is you'll position this bracket, and you, you won't have your, obviously, you won't have your bushing in welded into your frame, but go ahead and with this bracket, or this shackle plate at 90 degrees, scribe your hole, center punch it, drill it, um, and then go ahead and hole saw the frame for your tube, and then go ahead and weld your tube in. Now that you've got your tube frame hole sawed through both walls and your bushing that's supplied with the kit put in through both walls, welded in, now you're ready to go ahead and install your, your rubber bushing and then your tube, uh, also included, goes through both walls. Now you're ready to go ahead and bring your shackle plates hanging off of this here. The stubby version, and this, now this is on the uh, passenger side. Uh, obviously you're going to want to match them in pairs, either standard length or stubby on both, but we wanted to give you a chance to look at the, the lower profile. Uh, it's not hanging down as far as the, uh, the standard. Again, it's about one and seven eighths. Now, when you go to mount the, the passenger side, this hole right here, you're going to use that as a gauge uh, and center punch that hole there through your frame. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop this down so you can see. We've already got, gone ahead and done this, um, and of course we've got our bushings here. What you're going to want to do is after you lay that up there and make sure everything's where it needs to be, center punch that, drill this hole. You've got, you got two walls on your tube frame. Go ahead and drill through both walls with a half inch drill bit, but only drill, then you're going to come back again and drill only this wall only, the outside frame only, to three quarters of an inch. Now, you obviously don't want to go all the way through because it's creating a shoulder on that, on that back wall. So, after you've done that, you can go ahead and get all your, your bushings back in, just like we showed you on the driver's side. This comes up. Uh, now, this tube also comes with the kit. Set it right in there. Now be real careful. It's a pain if you drop this inside the tube frame and you got to go back inside and chase it. It's a, it's a real uh, bear to try to get. get. So go ahead and bring that on up and use, use that right in there. Now you can get your bolt through here and guide that on through and all through the, the uh, other wall and then of course nut it on the back side. So.
Now one thing that is very important is do not over tighten these shackle bolts. These nuts are crimp nuts. They're not going to come undone, but you're going to want to uh, tighten it enough for the everything to stay in position, of course, but yet not over tighten it so that the shackle will not move and articulate. Now for the application uh, on the uh, bolt-on application, not the weld-in bushing application, you're going to pull a center measurement from the center of this bolt to the back of the center of the hanger bracket. And we'll show you that here in just a minute. But center of this location towards the back. Now, as I showed you to pull your measurement from that one bolt up front, and we showed you that earlier, back to this center of this eye right here, 43 inches. That is where you're going to want to locate your bracket uh, that's going to bolt on to the underneath side of your Jeep frame. Now this, we've already had and gone ahead and built this installation for the shock reversal with the weld-in tube through the frame. But if you're going to use this application to bolt, bolt through, this is how you're going to set that up. 43 inches and then everything's just uh, drilled and bolted through bolted. So that's, uh, that's what you're looking for there. Now with this bolt-on application here, you're going to go ahead and, like we showed you, the 43 inches, go ahead and scribe your uh, location to center drill and drill. You're going to drill a half inch hole through both walls of your tube frame, but only on this outside wall are you going to drill the hole for this three quarter inch spacer. It'll slide through both, uh, I'm sorry, through it, slide through only one wall and through bolt both walls. But the main thing is not to drill the three quarter inch hole through both walls, just the one outside wall only. After you've got your 43 inches marked here and in position, this one here is marked and ready. You're also going to be drilling and tapping this hole right here for your, uh, for your bolt as well.